All right, it's pro bike time, and today we've got this lovely Canyon Speed Max of top 10 PTO world ranked athlete, Daniel Backyard. Well, obviously, this is the bike that I'm very familiar with and a big fan of. Uh, it is the Canyon Speed Max CFR, the top of the range Canyon factory racing bike, although in a slightly different colorway. This is one of the new colorways, and in my opinion, let me nice. Um, he's riding a size medium, and we're obviously looking at this bike ahead of the Ironman World Championships in Kona. So there's a few subtle modifications for that race, which we'll get onto shortly. But first of all, let's take a look at the front end. Yeah, there's a lot to chat about up here. Um, so starting with the base bar, that is perfectly standard. Although a very nice base bar, no weird as that sounds, but genuinely the Ergon grips blend seamlessly into the base bar. It's a very neat design, great engineering by Canyon there, but everything else is different and custom. It's really cool. So obviously Daniel's decided he wants a slightly longer position that the Canyon can't offer. So he's actually had this adapter made by Canyon that just extends the aero bars forward slightly and puts a little bit of a pitch in there. And then coming up from that, we've got the normal adapters just to raise the height. And then we've got the aero bar itself, a monopole aero bar. I believe it's got a funky German name. Um, and then we've also got the long arm, which has got a really neat design actually so this is just like a soft plastic um on sort of the grip here and it's got a button on the top button underneath so you can go up the gear down the gears or the other way around actually but yeah either way very neat in terms of the elbow rest or arm rest in this case we've got these longer sort of forearm rests which you can buy from canyon with the ergon grips in there We've also got a neat modification with the computer mount. So ordinarily the computer would just mount on here. You can actually buy from Canyon this little adapter that just extends that further forwards. Clearly just for Daniel's like line of sight when he's looking down at the computer mount, he would rather have that a little bit further forwards. With this normal bracket, you can't actually go any further forwards. So that's where this adapter comes in, extends that forwards, a computer mount goes on there, but he's also had this magnetic bit made so that actually the bottle, or sorry, the straw can attach underneath. Now, talking of the straw, for those that aren't aware, this bike obviously has in-frame hydration storage. So we've actually got a bladder in the down tube down here with a straw that pops out here and comes out. You can refill that with a very neat system. They've got this hydro pack system. So it's a little valve here. You shove your bottle down against it, by pushing down, you open and activate that valve, you squirt your water in, and then when you lift off, that valve closes. So you don't get water spraying everywhere. We've also got the bento box actually built into the frame, so it's not an additional part on the top, and you've just got this neat lid here. Actually, some nice little Morton goodies left over. And also talking about fueling and hydration, worth pointing out that the bottle cage on the down tube here isn't particularly aero, at least for a TT or triathlon bike. That is going to be swapped out ahead of race day. So he's going to be having an aero bottle on the down tube. I believe the Elite Chrono bottle. And then of course, we've got the two bottle cages behind the saddle here. And now onto the wheels. Now Daniel's obviously partnered with DT Swiss. So he's going to be running the DT Swiss Arc 1100 wheels here in Kona. They're 80 mil both front and rear. So fairly deep set of wheels. In case you're freaking out that we've got a tan sidewall on the rear and a normal tire on the front, obviously it doesn't look great right now. They are gonna be swapped out ahead of race day. Um, we are currently running the Schwalbe Pro 1 TT prototype tires. I believe it's gonna be the same for race day. And we're gonna be quizzing Daniel on them very shortly. We're gonna bring him in, ask him about the tire widths, the pressures, etc. that he'll be running on race day. But now let's move back through the bike. We've got some slight customizations for Kona here. So he's got a one by setup. Now, first of all, I'm really impressed by this little bit. I know, little simple things, but we've got a little cover for where the front mech would have gone there. So it just fits in nicely, obviously made by Canyon. He is running a meaty one by big chain ring here. We've got a 58 tooth chain ring. It's one of the PCD classic one by chain rings. Um, 
he is actually, although he's running a Shimano Dura Ace group set on this bike, he's got the Quark crank set here. It's a 170 mil crank length, Quark power meter, and then on the end of those, he's got the Wahoo pedals. But paired with this Meaty 58 tooth one by setup, he's got an 1128 tooth cassette on the rear. As I said, Dura Ace rear mech. And then coming down from that, we've got a Ceramic Speed OSPW jockey rear wheels. They're basically oversized jockey wheels that helps to smoothen out that chain flow, reduce that friction. And talking of which, obviously, this chain will be swapped out for race day. Okay, so I've brought Daniel in now, as well as a digger in the background that's uh, <laughs> kindly joined us. Um, right, first of all, let's talk through some of the customizations and changes ahead of race day. Now, I've mentioned about the wheels because you've got this atrocious side, tan sidewall on the back and a novel on the front. So, what are you going for on race day? Um, and I want to know tyre pressures as well. Yeah, so, um, of course, the 80s, 80 mils, and then... Um, the prototype from uh, from Svalbard, the new ones. Um, I've I've ridden them since uh, what is it, uh, Dubai this year, okay. and I've just been like super happy with uh, with the performance of the tire. And you going 25 on the front? Yeah, so 28 on the rear or 25 on on this one I would go uh, 25, 25. Okay. But if it was a disc wheel, I'll I'll go uh, 28. Oh, um, interesting. So there's a small change there. Yeah, and then. Um, Tire pressures? Yeah, so I'll go up to six and a half bar um, in the front and seven bars in the Do you back. you know what that is in PSI? I have no clue. Okay. <laughs> cool. We'll, we'll put that on screen right now for yeah. the working bar and PSI. Uh, cool. Um, and then I haven't talked about your saddle because this is quite interesting. This is one of the jabeamized mm. saddles. So you've, have you been to their factory or the, sorry, their headquarters and had testing? Yeah, so so basically, I had a lot of years where I could not really f be comfortable on on the bike. Um, I tried a bunch of different types of saddles, um, and when I started working closely together with Canyon, we uh, I went to to Germany to Heises to do a lot of like bike fitting, uh, aero testing, and so on, and we found that saddle to be perfect. And for me, it's it's changed my whole game on the bike. Uh, not only. Like I, I'm comfortable now on the bike, but I can also produce more power. So I've I've actually been uh, I've been pretty happy about changing saddle, um, and also been pretty surprised on how how much of, of an impact it can actually do on your yeah. on I've, your I've, performance. I've seen this particular saddle. It's the Stride by Jabirma. It's actually on quite a few pro bikes. So yeah, it seems to be going down quite well. Yeah. And then obviously, as I've mentioned, you, you'll be swapping up the chain. Probably doing the same thing a lot of pros do, drop from the bike off the ceramic speed ahead of the race, right? Yeah, Getting true. Getting the ceramic speed chain on and oversized jockey wheels. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll opt for the new uh, the new covered ones, the covered versions from um, from ceramic speed. Um, yeah, it'd be rude not to, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would, and it just looks mean. So. <laughs> Should we talk about your kit then? Yep. Uh, let's start with the tri suit. So um, I've been working with uh, Fusion since 2019. Um, this is the like standard uh, suit from from Fusion, the high speed. Um, this is not the suit I'll be wearing on race day. Uh, we've done some some smaller upgrades on the suit, but uh, all in, this is the suit I've been race, racing so far, um, and I re I've really enjoyed you see it. It's got these sort of like trip sort of lines across the back, isn't it? It's yeah, like, exactly. And it, it just works very well with the drone, uh, with the Met drone helmet. Yeah. Um, that's what we've we've found that, you know, all in all, my whole kind of package of um, of equipment just works very well together. Nice. Um, and as you know, like, if you do changes on, on the suit, you might change the helmet and so forth. So it, it's about finding the whole kind of system working it's interesting together. Not a lot of pe people talk about that with us, but it's <laughs> uh, it's interesting you mention it. So, I mean, maybe people don't do it as, as much as you think they do, but it's, it's interesting that you, that is something you're really conscious of. It's like, if I change something, it will have an impact on the rest of the equipment. So. Yeah, and you would be surprised how much of an impact it actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, actually like, has. So you've got sort of this almost like papery kind of uh, <laughs> Um, uh, material at the bottom here. And I've got to ask about this. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, it, this is an old suit, so it's maybe it not is. in best, uh, the best condition. But this is grip for sort of staying on the saddle. Yeah, especially when uh, when I just uh, you know come out of the swim, then yeah. it's it's nice to have grip in the first part of the bike portion where you push a lot of watts. Um, and I've just found, actually, it's it, it 
takes me back to when I w did not ride that saddle. Uh, I just had problems with like staying like pr proper seated in the saddle and still pushing watts. Yeah. So uh, that was kind of a do-it-yourself uh, version of. Uh, and what yeah. is it? What if you? Actually, it's just like normal uh, grip from if you have like socks with grip. Okay. Uh, under it is yeah. just ca that kind of uh, nice. stuff I put on. So good uh, work, awesome. Yeah. Uh, well, let's carry on on the bike then. So we've got your Oakley shades here. Yeah. Nice. And then, oh, sorry. Obviously, that'll be for the run because you got a visor on here. So you have got your Red Bull. Uh, this is the Met drone yep. helmet here uh, with the Red Bull customization on it. Um, which yeah, is, is is this the wide body helmet? Yeah, it is the wide body, and I would. I would say like everybody should ride a wide body if you have a decent position on on the on your bike. It's just a great helmet, and um, I've actually been surprised. You know, it's very hot and humid here, and there's still a fair bit of ventilation through the helmet. And you know, that's one thing I've been very surprised of because of of course it's like you can you can overcook uh, when you have the helmet on for four hours, but. I, I found it pretty well um, in these conditions, and it just it feels comfortable riding. So uh, that's okay. nice. Nice one. And then we've got the Bond Zero. Yeah, ba basically, um, I ride these because it's it's a boa lock, and I like the w the way it's it's easy to put on, and um, and also it's it's easy to tighten. It's very tight around the foot. And that's just nice for middle and, and long distance racing. Brilliant. And now a lot of people will assume it's just because aerodynamics that people will opt for these, but it's actually, I mean, I'm talking from experience here because I'm a Bond fan. Actually, the feel of these shoes is quite different to a lot of others, and kind of the, the the kind of the structure inside as well, how it holds your feet, is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it is. You you have to get used to it because yeah. when you ride like Shimano shoes or whatever before, it's it's a whole other feeling because they're very like stiff so you feel like the power transfer down to the pedals is just yeah it's it's very good and of course you can whack them in the oven and mold them a little bit so exactly so cool. it's i like them awesome and then onto the run so sorry i jumped ahead of myself so you have the oakley shades and then yeah the alpha flies so i think um we'll see on on um on the race day what i'll be wearing wearing but i've used the alpha flies for some time now um I still have to decide if the if it's the alphas or the the next percent I'm gonna race on on race day, but definitely Nikes. Um, that just works for me. Uh, the headband, of course, um, and then also a pair of uh, nice Oakleys. Probably quite crucial though when you're running through the energy lab and drops of sweat are running down your forehead. So yeah, <laughs> true. Nice one. Well, um, thanks ever so much for all of this, and best of luck for race day. We'll be thanks rooting so for you. Thanks ever so much for watching. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please give it a thumbs up, give it a like, and don't forget to subscribe.